There you go. Are we on now? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Not Just Blowing Smoke. We're coming at you from Twin Smoke Shop Studio Headquarters in Hooksit, New Hampshire. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, Google, basically wherever you get your podcast from. I'm Pastor Padrone, and I'm here tonight with my co-hosts, Nick, Dave, and Paul, and we have Bree and Kendra, the Potion Master, here with us from the 724 Lounge. And tonight, people, is our anniversary episode. Yay! Yay! We've actually been doing this stinking podcast for a year. It's amazing. It's hard to believe. Uh, Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We're back. Before Hello. we get started, I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about what we're going to be smoking. It is the Boulevard Corfrida, the number 754, which is the Churchill size. It is from General Cigar. And um, we were originally going to do the Robusto, but we felt we needed something bigger. It's big. It's big. <laughs> The wrapper and binder are Connecticut Broadleaf. The filler is Nicaraguan and Honduran. It's a Honduran-made cigar. It is a Churchill measuring 7 by 54. It is a very, very hefty cigar. And Kendra, what have you wrought for us to drink with this monstrosity tonight? Sausage rope. <laughs> oh, I hate you guys. Don't do that anymore. Yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is that what you're calling this drink a sausage roll yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so we went with the old-fashioned tonight mm, uh the oh reason i goodness. chose that mostly was because orlando when he comes to the 724 lounge he loves the way that we make old fashions mm -hmm. so i did it for him unfortunately he won't be here to give me praise on the old-fashioned but uh, I used Old Forester 100 proof. Woo! Ooh, nice. I like it. Yep. And um, Nick's going to come at me right now. I mm. used Simple Syrup. Oh, Ooh. gosh. Oh, boy. It's okay. <laughs> Old Forester 100 proof, Simple Syrup, and what else? And uh, bitters, and orange peel. What kind of bitters? The, uh, the aromatic, the basic kind. The aromatic, basic kind? The basic aromatics. Whatever yep. you find basic at Walmart, basic. Uh, you can't get that at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to get it at Walmart in the little like bar section. I've never seen it there. The Ang Angostura bitters. The Angostura bitters. Yeah, yep. I've never basic seen Angostura. it there, but it could be. Now, if Sam the barman was making your old-fashioned tonight, there'd be like three different types of bitters in there because yes. he tries to be all fancy and everything. But he sometimes is. less is more, people. Yeah. I'm getting plenty of bitter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm getting drink. plenty oh, of bitter yes. in that, too. Yeah. yeah. And Ooh. it would be some green color. That he likes using neon-colored liqueurs. Right, yes. This is not your typical super mm. herbal neon, you know. <laughs> It, it's a straight up old fashioned. Twirl that stick, girl. Right. Now, Twirl Heather, that. I got my stick. Kendra hey. and Bree <laughs> have been given <laughs> talking sticks because it has been told that uh, we interrupt them too much. So when, if you're listening, you can't see this, of course. So I'm explaining that if, you know, they have these talking sticks, these nice glitter filled things. They're very nice and girly. And if they hold them up, it means that we have to shut up and let them talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sausage rope. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on, Kendra, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Pete and meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't why don't we start with the ladies tonight? What do you think so far initially? What are your initial thoughts on the pairing with a cigar? Oh me first? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well. I'm getting a lot of sweetness um, off, and which is weird for me because I feel like normally I get spice right off the bat, but this one's actually um, a lot creamier. Um, my my first few puffs like kind of have a sweetness behind them. Um, it smelled very chocolatey. I was mm. getting a lot of chocolate and leather from that as well, and chocolate. the drink is just delectable as always. As it's just um, 
I don't know. It's it's refreshing with the pairing because mm -hmm. it's also sweet it's Kendra in a tumbler, yes. delectable as always. And less is more as usual. And less is more. <laughs> 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 well, it's true though. If you try to overdo a drink, it, That's true. It, more times than not, it's it's weird. It just doesn't work. So, yeah. Unless you're Sam, and then half the time. Right. Then he'll work. talk you into thinking it's good. <laughs> talk you into <laughs> oh, sleepy oh. Sam. <laughs> we can say whatever we want about him because we know he's sleeping right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely not watching. He's definitely not watching. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Kendra? What do you think of the uh, cigar? So uh, I'm, I'm definitely pleased with the cigar in terms of, you know, it's, it's not <laughs> overpowering my life. Um, <laughs> it, it is earthy, a little spicy. I wish I was getting some of that chocolate, mm. but I'm not quite yet. I think it's a little bit early with just, um, you know, a few puffs in, a couple sips in. I don't have... Um, like exactly my thoughts wrapped around, you know, how I like the pairing or how I like if it's, I think it's a contrasting pairing on my first couple mm. sips and puffs. Um, I don't know if the, the flavors are really matching up the strength. Yes, but right. But yeah, you'll have to circle back to me. Um, we could do that. Yeah. Too. Yeah. But I am enjoying the first couple draws off this smooth. Very good. Cool. Nick, do you have a one-word uh, response for how you think the <laughs> pairing is going so far? Sweet nuts. That's two. I, I'm not... Yeah. Can you count at all? <laughs> I can probably count to four. Okay. Right now, I'm so tired. You want to try? No. Um, <laughs> chocolate. I get the the bitters from the drink mm -hmm. and this with the Connecticut, it has the Connecticut broadleaf on the wrapper and the binder, right? Yes. And just little bit of chocolate in there with a little bit of spice, really smooth, medium body all day long. Some, something like this you could smoke all day, all night. Mm -hmm. Um, really nice, really nice. Um, we got, uh, Rod, uh, who's our token Canadian, who's always here. And he is saying that he has been here since the very first show. Yay. He says, happy birthday. And here's to many more. That's a uh, very nice of you, Rod. Thank you. And we really appreciate you for being a uh, regular listener and Heather, you know, is, uh, watching too. And, um, uh, that's all. And Brad is back. Uh, tough is. call, Bruins or NJBS? It's NJBS all day. Come on, all freaking day long. Paul, pastor, what are your initial thoughts on the cigar, the drink, and the pairing thereof made? I think the pairing is fantastic. Uh, I'm not a old fashioned type of guy, and I mean that. Very I mean that in the drink <laughs> sense. <laughs> You're kind of old. I consider myself to be very old school. Old Social media, what's that? I think I got. I think I got a, a handwritten letter from Paul the other day and showed up in my mail. That's how old school he is. I was like, "What's this?" And he's like, "Oh, I, it was probably." I was going to send you a text, but I was like, "Nah, I couldn't do a it." Postcard <clears throat> from his vacation. I did, I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> was it typewritten? It, it, it was. It was. From a uh, typewriter from the 1970s. So, the, <laughs> but the uh, the pairing is, I think, is fantastic. The the old fashioned right off right off the bat, I got a lot of that spicy sweetness with the bitters. Um, the strength was right up front. It's mellowed out a little bit. Uh, the cigar on its own, a lot of earthy spice notes. The, the, but with the drink, uh, it's pulling out a little bit more of the sweet earthy flavors. Mm -hmm. And I am getting a little bit of that chocolate that you're talking about. But mm -hmm. it's only with the drink, not on its own. On the on its own, I'm only getting that earthy spice. Yeah. Um, nice smoothness too. Um, and we've been smoking the last couple of weeks the 554, right. which I've been not really sold on, but this size, I think I am. The, the 754 is definitely more. Are uh, you being truthful? I am being very truthful. You're not just saying that because no. you're on. Because size edge. matters, Pastor. Size does matter. <laughs> size matters. <laughs> right, ladies? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, this is a very earthy kind of, you know, dirty, gritty cigar. There's yeah. Some, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of coffee ground kind of note to this. A little bit. A little bit of, a little bit of that cocoa. I do agree with, with Paul that I think it's the sweetness and a lot of the contrasting flavors that are in the drink that combined with the earthiness yeah. of the cigar create that uh, sensation of cocoa, like a dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. a sweet, it's not a sweet, creamy milk There's chocolate. There's some deepness. It's a that. nice dark chocolate. It's very deep. But it's not, it's not very overt. And I really do think it, I, I agree with Paul. I think yeah. it's brought about by the drink. Um Dave, do you have anything that you want to share, or are you too busy? Uh, no, I'm actually playing with your little soundboard. <laughs> I've, I've been a big fan of the Bolivar since the beginning, um, since we got it. It's because and, it's six bucks. Yes, and um, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of earth earthy tones from it, and a spice, but I, I'm I'm not getting, and I don't think I ever really have gotten any cocoa out of this at all. And when I read. Uh, the description online when I was reading up on it, and it was saying it was full bodied and stuff. To me, this is like a medium cigar. Yeah, I don't um, think it's. That, I don't I, think I it's full body. Call yeah. it full body. Um, mm. But the the spice in it, I, I'm absolutely like. It's like this sweet, earthy spice, um, and it's amazing. I lo I love it. All right. Well, there you go. There's our first impressions, all of which seem to be pretty positive. Um, let's talk a little bit. Hold on. Bree, Bree raised her uh Oh, you've, her raised, talking you've stick. raised your stick. I just had a, a <laughs> side comment that yes. I was just reminded of. I, I feel like with cigars sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you get a lot of that. You can't judge a book by its cover. I feel like people will like look at this and they're they're gonna get more full body flavors from it just by how it looks. They're gonna say, Oh, that must be a full body cigar. Like made like subconsciously or consciously, but in my experience I feel like I've seen that happen a few times. Do you think that's because of the size of the cigar, the color of the cigar? Both. Both. Yeah. The size Definitely. and color. It's big and brown, therefore it's gonna be full bodied. <laughs> hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Put the words right out of my mouth. There you go. Yeah. Mm. That's what she said. Oh, boy. It's going to be a long night. I did. I did have a, a, a customer today who was asking me about a Charter Oak uh, Maduro, mm. the, uh, Broadleaf, and um, said that he expected it. You know, he'd never had it before. And looking at the color of the wrapper, which are, are very, very dark, darker than this cigar, yeah. um, that he was expecting it to be very full-bodied. And I said, no, actually, it's just a... I'd say it's a straight medium cigar. Yeah. And he said it doesn't, and he was like, you mean it, I, sh I can't tell by the color of the wrapper? I said, not really. You know, the, nah. the darkness of the wrapper really does not say much in terms of strength. You know, sweetness, yeah, yes. Yep. Um, and maybe flavor, yes, mm -hmm. but not strength. It doesn't mean it's going to be one of these cigars that kicks you in the teeth. Right. And again, the uh, my favorite example is the uh, um, Hammer and Sickle trademark Maduro. Yeah, right. Uh, that is a mild to medium cigar. And they and have it a, is jet yeah. black. And they use a San Andreas wrapper on that. Yep. Yeah. Well, look at the perfect example that I use all the time in the shop with customers is the Ashton Connecticut. I'm um, sorry, Ashton. The Ashton um, Connecticut. No, the Ashton Ashton Maduro. <sighs> they use a Connecticut broadleaf. Mm hmm. And that is jet black as well, and that looks like a really full body. It looks like a really heavy cigar. And but, that's a more mild to medium, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Great cigar, but it's not going to smoke anything over a medium. Right. You know, it'll anybody probably touch. Anybody can smoke that. Anybody can smoke that. Yep. A wonderful cigar, but it's a light to medium cigar. Really good flavor. Yep. So, you know, like, like uh, we announced at the beginning of the episode, it is our anniversary, and... Um, our first episode aired on August 19th of 2019. We recorded it on the 16th, which would have been a year ago yesterday. And first episode aired just two days, two days from now. Um, and I can't believe that a year has gone by already with this. Yeah. And you know, our Crazy. original idea had been to 
uh, do a podcast that was really aimed primarily or first at Twins customers. And we pull from all over New England. So that was a pretty big, big audience by itself. But then, you know, also uh, to the cigar and pipe smoking community, you know, in the United States. And, you know, it, especially since we're fortunate enough to be one of these stores that ships, yeah. you know, that made sense. We wanted to create a, a, a podcast where our own customers could kind of take us home with them. Hence the, the kind of tagline, you know, that we've had, you know, it's, you know, twins, you know, the, the fun, the knowledge and, and expertise of Twin Smoke Shop wherever you are, whenever you want it. That was the whole idea about doing that. And uh, we wanted to do something that was weekly, something that was unscripted, something that was natural and kind of low key, informal and in how it was done. A lot of podcasts out there have everything written out. We've got enough, I you, you guys know, I have notes with me, but they're more, all the facts about what we're smoking is on the page and topics are on the page and some notes about when things should start, you know, so that we're not just dragging on. It's kind of like a, a broad outline that kind of makes just enough structure to keep things going in the right direction, but there's plenty of room to go right, left, up and down, however things go. It's a very natural kind of show. And I like that very much. And I think, uh, I know for people like uh, Rod, who've been listening for the last year, I'm speaking to the choir, but if you're just tuning in, you know, what makes not just blowing smoke unique is that every week we review a cigar and a pipe tobacco, and each of them are paired with a unique drink. You know, it could be a cocktail, could be a spirit wine, beer from the 724 Lounge. And we have our bartenders involved from the 724 Lounge with us. So we're combining cigars and pipes and drinks and a very unique panel-like discussion. You don't see a whole lot of podcasts out there with more than a couple of people on them. That's, that's really rare. And um, this isn't even everybody. And, but it's it's almost everybody. Sleepy Sam's not here. True. But other than that, you've got the the basic crew here for uh, not just blowing smoke. And I really think that makes us unique. There's no other podcast that does those three things at the same time. And there's not a whole lot of podcasts that talk cigars uh, that have the ladies on, like. Kendra and Bree over here, and they both know their stuff too. And sometimes we forget that, and that's why they need talking sticks. But <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that'll help uh, correct us and everything. But um, and you know the original idea had been to do an audio podcast, and then COVID happened, <laughs> and everything shut down, and we started realizing that we missed seeing, you know, our customers who came into twins, the customers, you know, especially missed seeing the uh, bartenders up at the 724 lounge. And so we started doing Facebook live episodes really to deal with the fact that we wanted to stay in touch with our friends and, and family who make up the, the twins customer base. And, uh, that went, that was such a, I think it went over so well, we just decided to stick with it. And Kirk Kendall, the, the owner of Twins, and who is uh, our primary right now, he's our only real sponsor, <laughs> we can say. You know, we're so grateful to him for letting us use the, the space and um, uh, providing uh, many of the cigars and most of the drinks that we have on the show. Uh, he, he's such a great boss and very supportive of us in that way. But he really loved that format where uh, on Facebook Live, we were able to interact with people and see people like Dan and Rod and Heather and Brad who are listening to us 
right now. And um, so we've decided to keep going that way. And um, um, uh, something I don't know if many people know, uh, you know, this is really, this podcast has really been a labor of love of uh, Dave, Paul, Nick, and myself. You know, we've, the equipment that we're using, you know, we've bought ourselves or borrowed. <laughs> yeah. Long term. Long term. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Long term borrowing. The website, you know, um, the hosting sites that we've used, we've all done that ourselves. It's really been, you know, our desire to really put out a really solid, unique podcast. And we're really glad for you guys for um, being out there, listening to us and supporting us, uh, especially through the weirdness that happened is when we switched back to video, we had all sorts of crap happen. <laughs> You know, Some technical issues. Well, you know, we had to learn all sorts of new stuff. Dave, who's our producer, um, you know, has had to learn a whole new uh, uh, editing suite in order to do this. And I think now we're at the point where we're getting comfortable again with, with how things are looking. But, um, you know, that's kind of an overview of, like, how we started and... and um, I'd like to ask you guys, what are some of your favorite memories from doing the show over the last year? Hmm. I, I, I want to start with that. All right. You start with that, Paul. Because I want to bring us back to our first episode. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Now, we, oh. We, we, our first episode, we were in the retail center in we Londonderry. Were. Yeah. And it was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. This is after we had closed. Mm -hmm. We had a round table set up. Yeah. We were using whatever mics we could find. Yeah. Oh god. Borrow steel, whatever. <laughs> and and this all this equipment that most people can't see that Dave is behind wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. We were utilizing an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, the first episode came and we were just feeling our way through and you know, we we thought it was we we certainly had it I think the first episode was good. Um and it took about a month for us to figure out. Yeah, it took us a little bit. That the mics weren't picking up anything. Yeah. It was yeah. just the yeah. iPad alone. Yeah. So yeah. here we are positioning our mics. And are we, can you hear us, Dave? You know, and are we, are we sounding good and all this stuff? <laughs> and no matter, and he goes, yeah, he says it's sounding great, you know. And all of a sudden, like a month later, he figured out that the mics itself <laughs> weren't picking us up. It was just yeah. the iPad that was placed in the center of the table. And so th that's just... The, the beginning of learning about how all this stuff works. That's how little we actually knew, knew yeah. what we were doing <laughs> when we started and, doing And do you remember that first episode, the music was playing through the whole the episode? The whole episode oh, yeah. played in the background, yeah. <laughs> Which I actually liked. I know it was, I may be in the minority, but I actually kind of liked it. It was a kind of a little goofy, fun little Mm -hmm. you know musical thing that was playing in the background and then we <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but oh, it uh like free music yeah but <laughs> that to me i always go back to that first episode yep. and, and you know how we started and you know where we've come and, oh yeah and all this stuff that dave uh utilizes for the show and again like i said most people can't see it uh is still when you compare it to other podcasts out there is still it's good but it's on a minimalist basis yeah you know we don't yeah. have the great you know uh sound boards and computers and other things that other people have but i think we've been able to really put forth a great product a great show mm -hmm. um and uh i think we've got a, a great future We've got we've got content. We got content. at least we've got we've got content. <laughs> <laughs> a year's worth of content. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Good grief. Yeah. What about you, Nick? What do you remember about how we started and some well, we, of the frustrations we had, or good good memories we had with some of those first episodes? I know it was a a long time ago when me and you we were talking about it. We on our Saturdays when we worked together, we were yep. just kind of throwing the idea out. And, uh, ooh, we got a message. Ooh, look at that. Um, we were throwing the idea out and we're like, oh, yeah, we should try to do it. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, we could do me, you. And then it was like me, you, and Paul. Yep. And then it was like, oh, well, we got to have Dave in it. Yep. Dave knows electronics. He knows all the systems before. So we're like, all right, let's get Dave in it. 
and then we started looking for the equipment and and the mics and we tried several different mics and they didn't work and, and we, we buy thought we stuff and then it didn't and I work, had to so borrow we yeah stuff. we had to buy we had I had to borrow equipment from the show that I was involved in a, a while ago and gratefully you know for for a friend of mine he's like yeah yeah that's great you know do it take whatever you need um and we got the mics and then I had you know we got the soundboard and Dave had to get you know the the program to run it and everything but I think the most memorable episode was when we had to record the pipe section with Mark like four times oh, yeah. because it never recorded. And I was just like, okay, let's just, you guys record it and that's it. It took like what, three, four hours to just record a half hour segment of pipe that's with Mark. the Groundhog Day episode. That was insane. Yeah. Because for yeah. us, we had to record the thing four times. Yeah. To get it to work. It was it was amazing. Yeah. The Did, stuff we had to do. Good times. Did you get four drinks? <laughs> I uh, think we skipped the drinks. Nick wishes. It got to it got to the point where we skipped the drinks, skipped the pipe and smoking it and they just talked about it because it was just it was it was it went on so long. I remember we closed and it was like 9.30, 9.45, yeah. and they're still trying to record it. Yeah. And it was just Mark just talking, and then they're going to edit his part and then insert it into the episode. So it was it was a crazy yeah. night, but that was the one. On the plus side, we all knew what we were going to say. Yeah. We didn't have to think about it. We'd already done it three <laughs> times before. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was a, that was a Another memorable program. moment was uh, the first time I saw Kendra do the happy dance. Oh, the happy dance. <laughs> now we're video, Kendra. You could actually do it for everybody. Ooh. You do the happy dance. Yeah. Is she blushing? No. she blushing? No. You're not going to do the happy dance? <laughs> not doing it. Not doing it? She can do it while well not, 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 not feeling on. it. You're not feeling it? No. No. <laughs> not no. even for Rod. He's in Canada right now. Oh, I can't do, do that because you tell me to. Do it I for have, Rod. I have to. <laughs> I have to do it when it when it means something. <laughs> oh, it means man. something right now. You know, she needs more bourbon, guys. Right. She needs more bourbon. More bourbon. More bourbon. Nick, uh, get over your drink. I'm now, not giving anybody uh, my Kendra, drink. Kendra, your delicious. part on the show has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger as the time has gone on. It started out with. Making one drink in the middle of the show, we called it the mid-show palate cleansing, and that evolved into a pairing with each, you know, thing. And you would come down for a minute or two and talk about what it was, and then go back upstairs. And now, you know, not every week, but you know, you're you're on for whole shows and everything. Do you have any thoughts or memories about things or? misgivings about saying yes or <laughs> <laughs> sausage <No>. rope <laughs> sausage rope <laughs> yeah. I think that <laughs> yes yes stop <laughs> so I think my favorite episode was when Colin was on and I think oh, that's yeah. Pretty, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that was a good time uh. I mean, Glenfiddich. not only because he gave us the bottle of Glenfiddich 21 and oh. it was wonderful, but was. I think he, I think he added a lot of value too with yeah. like s superb product knowledge. I think he was my favorite mm -hmm. um, rep that would come on or that came on the. Was he once or twice? I don't he remember. Was once. Just once. Yeah. yeah, just the once. Yeah, but he can come back. Yeah, well, he's he's not our rep anymore. Oh, so. doesn't matter. He can still come back. But Colin was the guy that got me into scotch. And, you know, I, I owe him a lot for the time that he spent with me, um, you know, helping me through product knowledge and really helping me figure out, you know, what I was into, developing my palate, you know, really just explaining everything he possibly could. Um, he even would come in and I remember Kimber's first week he came in and he walked the whole wall of, of whiskey behind the bar and he was telling her everything that he could possibly think to tell her um, right before an event started so I think that you know people that are willing to come on the show give product knowledge which, which is beneficial to all of our listeners um, that really 
is is great and i think we're we're going to continue to do that talia has been on twice Mm -hmm. so tequila talia yeah those are the shows that that really stick with me because you know that really shows you know our partners outside of twins that really want to take time out of their own personal lives to to really, you know, get their product out there to the listeners. And so. I think that's another thing that's made this podcast unique. I don't know any other podcast that's had liquor reps on the on the show. And so to have people like Colin and Talia on, um, and Talia was great because she not only, you know, knew her stuff about, you know, her products that she was representing, but she also enjoys cigars. and. Yeah. You know, for her to, you know, she loves being on the show and that's fantastic. And, you know, Colin was also the guy who got Dave to make the leap into Scotch. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason you did your happy dance. That was was great. Colin's episode. Yeah. It's a very, that that was the episode that I did the happy dance. Yeah, Yeah, it 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 was. And you loved it because you saw Dave go from, Oh, Scotch, it just burns. Where's my <laughs> Sam Adams? To, well, I can really appreciate this. And he was the guy that had helped you appreciate it. And now he helped him appreciate yeah. it. And watching that happen made you do the Dave happy day. What an angel. Paul. Yeah. Dave, Dave yeah. and Paul have had some, some moments on the show where... You know, you can see the look in Paul's eyes, and we're like, "Oh, we're gonna have a margarita tonight." And he's like, <laughs> he's like "Oh shit!" But then, you know, he's like, "I actually enjoyed that." And, yeah. And just give me my mictors. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dave used to only like Sam Adams, and now he will take his bourbon or scotch neat, and yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. amazing. It's yeah. a huge, huge change. Yeah. And we're yeah. also uh, turning Sam on to cigars. Even though he's mm-hmm. on the, the alcohol side, he's, he's one of the bartenders. But he's also opening up his his palate and opening up his choices um, when he's choosing drinks compared to what he was before, just kind of making the drink. And now he has to think about the cigar side. Now he has that knowledge. Even though he's on the show once in a while, but he's still able to think about the cigar, think about what it tastes, and then match it with the drink. <laughs> he's sleeping somewhere. He's sleeping somewhere, but he's he's with us in spirit. Yeah, he's with us in spirit. Yes, <laughs> that's how it is most of the time. He's dreaming. <laughs> he's dreaming currently yeah. right now about flavors. Yeah. Just flavors <laughs> dancing around in his head. He's writing it down, and he's he wakes up for like five minutes, and he's yeah. writing it down, and he goes back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, we oh got to get gosh. a snoring sound for the sound. Yeah, right? yeah. Now, Bree, you're probably the person who's newest to the show. This is probably your third or fourth episode, maybe more. I, but it, it, it's been a really a handful of times out of the last year, and you've started smoking a pipe. You've you know done that, and but already people have really appreciated your insights and the the way you express. Um, you know your experience of the cigar pipe tobacco people really seem to go with that do you what what have you enjoyed about being on the show do you have favorite memories yet or yeah. is it are you is that too new for you to say no you know it's um i think with kendra on that note like one of my favorite aspects of it is that we're getting like product knowledge and input mm. and history on and about like different products the people that have represented it um, really like things that you can't really read on the internet, just mm. like things that are unique to every single person's experience. And it's kind of, um, I think, given us all as a team, like a chance to like collaborate and throw together ideas um, and have funny moments and inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like sausage rope. Yes, yeah, like sausage rope. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> So, that black yeah, Irish X was awesome. The best part, I think, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And that all of the funny bloopers, like when um, we think that we're off the air and we're actually oh, still live. God. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> that wasn't hilarious for me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I think my favorite blooper funny moment, and I can't remember whether either of you were here or not, but it was... We were doing the episode with uh, 
um, we were talking to Mark Mormar and he was on, he was online, he was streaming through um, Skype and he's sitting in his living room and he fell off his chair <laughs> and just disappeared. It was like he went down a hole so or something. And that was just like, oh, Mark's gone. <laughs> it was just one of those things. I almost wish we could do it back in slow motion or something. That'd be hilarious. Make like a little, like a little TikTok video out of it. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. Does anybody do TikTok here? Does anybody do TikTok? Unfortunately, I do. You do? Of course, Bree. I figure, I figure you would, Bree. But I, I mean, do you, do you even know what TikTok is, uh, Kendra? Yes, I do. You do, you, but you don't. You don't. You avoid it. Yeah. No, I don't avoid it, but I mean, I'm not that person that wants to put myself out there doing dances and She songs. just consumes. Happy dance. Yeah, happy dance yeah. TikTok. Yeah. Dave, do you oh. do TikTok? Um, I consume. I don't do any of, I, I don't produce. I just consume. I'm very wary lately with the whole Chinese government theory, but mm. I will say that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, let's take some time to do this week's Pastor Padron's Cigar Confessions. All right. Mm. And what I want to confess this week is that while I have a very nice humidor at home that is... Uh, nice and replete with nice uh, cigars inside there, all nestled nice and safe. How many times are you going to say uh, nice? Nice. I say nice. It's really nice. Yeah. It is. It's really, really nice. It's one of the, it's one of the, it's funny, one of the, one of the criticisms I've gotten is that a, a Pastor Padron is just too nice. You're too nice to be on a podcast. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but here's the thing. No. I, I am not <laughs> anal about checking the humidity in my personal humidor at home. I rarely check it. I don't even really think about it all that often. Um, and the reason for that is I have one of those Zykar crystal jars mm. in the bottom of my humidor. And what I love about that product is you pick up the jar and you look at it. And if the crystals are above the line that says you need to put fluid in here, then you know if the seal is good, the humidity is fine. And yeah. so you feel a cigar too. If it feels good, you know it's got a little, it's, it's firm, but it's got a little bounce, bounces right back. You know the humidity is fine. And I've gotten to the point where I know my seal is good. And if the crystals there are above that line, I don't even think about it. And I know that there are some people, and I, I hear customers come in, you know, and talk about how they're trying to get their, their humidity level up to, you know, 71 or 72 percent, and they, they can only get it to 66. And they're so, you know, concerned that their cigars are going to, you know, get too dry or, or whatever. You almost never hear, at least this part of the country anyway, about cigars being too wet. Maybe, nope. maybe in Florida you hear that, or Alabama somewhere in the South, but we don't we don't really deal with that. But um, you know, it, it really kind of struck me that the the even uh, most of the higher end humidors that we sell here at Twins don't even come with a humidification device. They come with racks in which you would put Boveda packs, yep. which are is a two-way system of humidification. And by that, I mean, for those of you who may be new to this whole thing, um, Boveda pack will have a certain amount of humidity that it is set to um, put things at. If it says 69 on it, then it's going to bring things up to relative humidity of 69%. If it's 70, 70, 72, 74, whatever it is, okay. And if the relative humidity is not there, it's going to put out humidity until stuff gets there. If the relative humidity starts to get above whatever it's set for, it reabsorbs that back into the pack. Yep. So it's not going to let your stuff get too humid. 
it's not going to let your stuff get too dry. And when the pack starts to feel hard, you know it's time to get a new one. And they're anywhere from a buck, if it's just a, one of those little individual packs, to six bucks we sell them for here at Twins. It's a great, inexpensive way for you to humidify your um, cigars. And all you need to do is pick up a bag and feel it. And you know where things are at. And more and more, I'm seeing things go that way. And so my kind of question for this is, um, if you have a humidor at home, what do you use to uh, do the humidification in it? And do you think things are kind of going away from the traditional system of having a humidification device that you fill with either mm -hmm. water or propylene glycol or you know, are things getting away from that and going into these products that kind of do it for you? Yeah. No yeah. muss, no, no fuss. Yeah. What's, what's your thought on that, Paul? So, I, I mean, all I look at is what our customers are asking us for. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the customers that come in here are looking for the Beveda packs. Yeah. Um, some will, will get the uh, humidifiers. Some will ask for the propylene glycol. Uh, but the majority of the clients are going to be looking for the Beveda pack uh, simply because we have told them how easy it is to use. Mm. I mean, I use the packs. I use the packs in my little Ziploc bag that I bring with me to work. I use them in my humidors at home. Uh, it's a set it and forget it uh, situation, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but one of the biggest things, too, is when you're talking to a client about the Beveda packs, they may come back later and say, I can't get this thing above 60 or... Uh, it's or it's registering too you know too low or whatever. Um, most of the time, it's where they place the humidors. Yes. Uh, either in the, in the summertime, if they have AC running, if it's near an AC register, that could be the problem. If it's in the winter time and they have it in the garage, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's another big problem. So uh, it's just making sure you put it in a place that is not going to be uh, is not going to get a lot of uh, AC or heat. Uh, depending upon the seasons, I always say put it in a closet or worst case, put it in a drawer that is not going to be affected by <laughs> in your sock drawer. Sock drawer. I, yeah, sock drawer. Seriously, I mean, I, I do the same thing too in the wintertime where, where if we have a lot of heat running through the house, uh, it's, it's not going to be affected by that. So It was uh, Eric Wentworth, I think, on the first episode he was on with us. Didn't he say he put his cigar in his sock drawer? I yep. think so, yep. yeah. Yep. And then six months later, he came back to it, and it was a um, La Gloria Cubana Series R Maduro cigar. That was his first cigar, and he smoked it on some football field and nearly barfed. <laughs> and I'm like, is that because it was with your socks, <laughs> or because it was dry, or was it because... <laughs> you had this incredibly strong kick butt cigar for your very first time. Poor Eric. He's had a lot of uh, heavy duty firsts. Yes. Oh, the, pi God. the pipe. The pipe tobacco. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was very. That was very unfair. Bird's eye. That was beautiful. <laughs> to give him uh, Gawith Hogarth's dark bird's eye. Bird's tears. That's like you know, it's that's like having you know a, a straight shot of espresso as your first coffee experience. Uh, you're probably not going to like it. I remember, uh, you know, when I used to work at a little taste of Cuba down in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, my uh, co-worker, Chris Lenzo, who's now the um, uh, regional rep for Miami Cigars mm -hmm. in the Northeast, he also worked part-time at Starbucks. And at the time, I had never had coffee. I was a tea guy and he couldn't believe I never had coffee. And so one time he comes down and hands me a white chocolate mocha. Whoa. That's a good and way to start. He's like, here, try this. And I tried it. And you know what? Danny liked it. <laughs> Danny like. Danny liked it. And I was like, ooh, this is good stuff. This is real sweet. And then I remember going uh, driving home from New Jersey to, to Massachusetts to um, visit my parents, seeing a Starbucks at one of the uh, um, rest stops, went in there and realized that he had got me hooked on the most expensive coffee that they had. <laughs> that furry little, oh, he got me hooked. Bree? 
spree. Uh huh. That's cool. a really funny story because that is the drink that got me addicted to Starbucks as well. Oh, yeah. Really? Starbucks yeah. every single day. Oh my gosh! And then mm. one day though, he stopped bringing me the white chocolate mocha, and he brought me. He just brought me a mocha, and I was like, okay. How upset were you? Not. This is still. You know, I've got the, the chocolate here, and you know, and and uh, but he still had the whipped cream on it. You know, that helped a little bit. And then he brought me just a mocha. And then by the end of it, I was black coffee. And now I can't go back. I can't. I can't. I, I can once in a while have a coffee with cream and sugar, but that just is so weird to me now. Well, I can't, I can't do it. Like they say, once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> and now you consume it by the gallon. That's what she said. <laughs> and now I consume it by the gallon. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yep. I make sure I have my 128 ounces of coffee every day. <laughs> Drinks more mm. coffee than water. You gotta get on those cold brews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny's iced coffee container is enormous. Yes. It's like it's, 64 it, it, ounces, oh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. It's, it's crazy. It's, huge. It, is, it it's is, huge. it is huge. It's like, I fill it with ice, though, and you know the ice doesn't melt in these new... He's lying. Uh, He's lying. Just puts like two cubes. No, the rest, no, I need the rest is coffee. There's nothing worse. <laughs> the worst thing in this world is lukewarm coffee. Ugh. Hot coffee, good. Cold coffee, good. Yeah. Lukewarm coffee... Uh, Unless it has whiskey in it. Unless it has whiskey. Or Bailey's. <laughs> or Bailey's. I have to disagree. I'll, I'll take my coffee at any temperature. Yeah. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Are you still <laughs> drinking it with cream and sugar, Dave? Um, or is it milk and... I prefer and, my and, diet and, tab. And what's the, what's the fake sweetener? Still, milk I'll and be, honey? I'll, I'll be Kendra, honest, what's, that, what's that fake sweet? What's the sweetener? <laughs> Splenda, Splenda yeah. Are you, are you drinking milk and Splenda? I'm still, I'm still on the regular. All right. I haven't replaced it yet. So. Kendra knows I like my coffee with egg whites. <laughs> yeah. Egg whites? Egg white, egg white coffee? What the heck does no, that even mean? Was that a joke? <laughs> what, 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 what? Now you have to tell the story. <laughs> What's right, up with that? Egg white coffee? Let her Kendra. talk. So in the, at the lounge we have in the, in the cooler, there's a carton of half and half. There's a carton of egg whites because we make fancy drinks with egg whites. Mm -hmm. And Brie came upstairs, made a coffee, put egg white in instead of cream. <laughs> and we were dying, laughing about it, and she still freaking drank it. She was like, it's actually not bad. And we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sausage rope. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's our uh, final verdict here on the uh, Boulevard 754? Dave, you're up. Um, I'm still getting a lot of earth and spice. Um, so nothing has changed for you. Nothing has changed for me. The universe and remains constant. The, the cigar is just as constant. It's beautiful. <laughs> Very well made. Okay, Dave. That's good. Nick. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Sweet yes. nuts. Yes. Well, yes, tell us about among the cigar. Sweet and nuts. What's your final thoughts on this? It's a, a lot damn... of tobacco notes. Like, yes. I don't know why. <laughs> Thanks for putting in. Appreciate okay. it. Uh, between the drink and the, the cigar, fantastic. The, the citrus and the sweetness that you get from the drink and the bitters goes very well with the scar some nice deep chocolate notes not really espresso earthy nice little sweetness smooth retro hail maybe a little tad bit of spice mm -hmm. but at the price of the cigar it's a phenomenal buy with the connecticut broadleaf wrapper and the binder you get that deep rich flavor in there yeah. it's nothing it, it it's it's nothing above a medium. It's a medium solid. Mm -hmm. Great cigar, great drink. Do it all day long. <laughs> all day long. I mean like 7 o'clock in the morning when you wake up. <laughs> before I take my pre-workout, cigar, this drink, pre-workout, ready to this, go. This. 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 This is fantastic. Paul. 
Beautiful, Beautiful meat. Nick, bitch. Nick smokes this cigar all day long. I would. How long would you smoke this cigar, Paul? It's transcendent. <laughs> I think the Cafradia 754 is my size. I'm not, I, 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 <laughs> he likes it big. I, yeah, I, I, for something, are we? I, I will say that the 554, the Robusto size, is is. I didn't like that as much. This one, for some reason, I really, really enjoy. It's I, just it's, not enough. It's just but not this enough, one man. Is just right. The cigar the is theory. still very, very consistent. A lot of earth spice uh, with the drink. The drink is, I think, it's phenomenal. It really, really is. I think mm. it's a great, great pairing. Um, it's bringing out a little bit more of those sweet, earthy flavors. The cocoa is still there. Um, the, the retro hail is really, really nice, deep, rich spice. Mm. So I'm going to say it's more of like a medium full cigar. Ooh. Okay, more of a medium full for you. Yep. Man. But it's, I think this is, uh, Dave was, couldn't believe it when I said I didn't really care much for the smaller size. He thought it was weird. The smaller size Definitely is okay, weird. but this 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 one this here is perfect. This is perfect. This, this is this the, one. This call this, it, this saved bol, uh, Bolivar for me. I call it the Goldilocks theory. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. Seven by That's fifty-four what she is said. just right for you. It's just right. I had to say that. <laughs> Bree, <laughs> what are your thoughts? So I ate my Luxardo cherry, and I think it changed the cigar for me. Hold on a second. At Hold first, on a second. I Did it make it more sweeter? It no, no one was looking at my gosh. This is fantastic. Sure. So it didn't. At first, well, I had that like that sweet cocoa, and it went from like a sweet cocoa flavor to almost more of like an earthy dark. I got more of the dark chocolate after mm. eating the cherry because I think that it kind of like rounded out the sweetness from the cigar um, because you have an additional like intense sweetness on your palate. Yep. And I, I do like how it changed it. Yep. It's um, opened it up a little bit more. It's still very consistent, but I'm getting a more um, complex and like deep cocoa note. So it's almost like a subtle sweetness as opposed to that like overt cocoa note that I got off the bat. Mm. And since we're talking about size, I do like that this cigar is larger <laughs> okay. than my middle finger. <laughs> Look size, at that Bolivar ring on there. It's yes. larger than my middle finger. <laughs> so. It's a perfect size. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. Kendra? Can well, what I have to say that? about the cigar <laughs> yeah. is Sausage that... Root. I don't like the guy on the ring. He's creepy <laughs> AF. Why? Uh, yeah. We could do without him. He's a he's a king. He's royalty. <laughs> Who is he? I have no idea. He Please looks like don't Napoleon. Ask him. He's definitely not Napoleon. No? He's got to be uh, I don't know somebody yeah. from Cuba because that's the same. It's the same band from the Boulevard from Cuba. So, well, so I'm assuming it's royalty from Cuba back in the day. Yeah. I don't know the story. Maybe Kurt can ring in on this. Uh, Kurt, if you're still watching, if you want to. Who's the guy on who's, the ring? Who's the guy on the ring? He smokes a lot of those. So Mr. Yeah. Bolivar. I would think uh, he would know. Kurt, if you're still watching, please yeah. comment. But also, I think with the drink, the mm. the citrus and the orange, the bitter is really helps cut through that earthiness a bit, which is good for me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if I knew what you guys thought of the cigar prior, I, I maybe would have put a dash of chocolate bitters in mm. instead, and and that would kind of have more of a that complimenting. Like, ooh, what was fireworks. That? That Oh, okay. I thought it was thunder. <laughs> you thought it was thunder with I clear don't skies. Know. I don't know. It's not a clear like, night. Sounds like a car crash to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. It's really loud. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been some gunshots. We live in New Hampshire now. It soaks it. <laughs> Could be anything, people. Could be a moose. Oh, Rod knows who it is. Rod, what do you got? Mm -hmm. Simone Boulevard. That's right. Or Simon. 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 Simon <laughs> Simon. 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 <laughs> Can't read. Simone, Simone would have an E. Or the true. <laughs> Can't read, guys. Leave me alone. So. Kirk Kendall. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just sold a cigar. I don't know. I probably should have gone a little bit deeper and, and uh, remembered. I, I, I knew. Heather, they cut me off. Uh oh. Sorry, sorry. You're Con up continue, Postmaster. Yes. My and my last little tidbit is that 
it's it was a wise choice to go with 100 proof bourbon because mm. at this point that drink would have been lost mm. yeah for sure nick yeah. concurs i do concur <laughs> concurred his drink has been gone for a long time but for at least the last 15 minutes yeah probably more like 30 probably and then and Nick's gonna smoke the rest of my Simone. Mm, Simone. <laughs> Simone. <laughs> Absolutely. And Simone. Uh, and that is all. I'll put my my baton away. Okay. No, oh, we still got the the pipe, uh, so you can definitely use that later. Very earthy. But <laughs> um, it might be a little bit of spice. <laughs> the cigar has been very consistent all the way through. You can tell none of our uh, flavor profiles really changed, except for Breeze, because. She ate the cherry. You know, she, she loves eating. She, she, she loves she eating that cherry. She ate it. it. She likes eating that cherry. It's, it's fantastic. I like staying PG thirteen. Oh, so Nick Most does not. Times. Nick does not. Uh, no, but uh, a very good cigar. And really, this this cigar sells here for six fifty. Six fifty. That's a <laughs> you know it's a phenomenal thing. I'll I'll tell you, um, uh, it's been very hard for us to keep these in stock. Mm. That says something too. Customers really enjoy these too. Yeah. Um, you know, I know a lot of people with everything going on with COVID and, and stuff. A lot of people are looking for ways to get a really good cigar without putting out, you know, 10 or $12 a stick. And if you're looking for something where you can get a good quality cigar for under $10, this is a really good choice. Oh, yeah. Um, it comes in a Robusto and a uh, Toro as well. Um, the Toro has been back ordered for a while. We're hoping to get those back in. But uh, as you can tell, the uh, Churchill size here uh, is a favorite, especially with Paul. Yes. And, uh, you know, for him, I guess longer is better. Correct. It's always, yeah. always better. So we're going to take a little said. bit of a break here. We'll be back with some stats on... Uh, the show will talk a little bit about top fives uh, as far as uh, download episodes, where our audience is and stuff like that, and talk more about the anniversary. And uh, we're going to be coming back smoking Rat Tray's Old Gallery. But also one last fact about the cigar is that it was made by one of the Padron family. Really? Mm-hmm. Who? Um... We'll get his name. Okay, <laughs> and on that note, we'll take our break and we'll, we'll have... come back and tell it on the set, the back half of the break. We'll have that. Thank you, later. Dave, for but starting I... that you made amazing conversation. All right. You... Hey, everybody, we're back. Thanks for hanging with us. The second half of the show, we are going to be smoking Rattray's Old Gallery. And from the tin, it says. Fine, dark Virginia, Kentucky, and a hint of Greek are ripened in the press for up to three months and then cut and rubbed by hand. From the uh, website uh, uh, where this stuff comes from, uh, we can get a little bit more information about uh, uh, Rattray and who he was. Charles Rattray was born in Scotland in 1880. And in 1903, he started working for Brown's specialty tobacco shop in Perth, which gave him the knowledge of the retail trade. In 1911, he bought the building and continued to run, run the shop under his own name, the House of Rattray. A quote from Charles Rattray describes the tobacco as follows. They are loved. He's talking about all his blends. They are uh, flavored with the seductive quality the connoisseurs appreciate. To this day, the blends of the British line, of which Old Gallery is one, are mixed according to original recipes that Charles Rattray developed more than a century ago. Uh, this is manufactured by uh, Coles Cope and Company in Denmark. It is a Virginia-based blend. Uh, Virginia, Kentucky, and Perique what are what make it up. There's no uh, discernible top flavoring on this. It's a ribbon cut tobacco. And Kendra, we have some kind of wine with this. What are we uh, drinking with this here tobacco? We are drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. 
and the the brand is Chloe. Mm -hmm. And of the two options we have in the 724 Lounge, this one is definitely it's it's a little bit lighter, fruitier. Um, it's um, it's definitely going to pair up really nice in a complimentary way with mm -hmm. this tobacco, and I can already tell. Um, yeah. A lot of cherry, mm -hmm. maybe even some raisin, just, you know, a nice, um, like, it, the the wine is super smooth mm. and light. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, Paul, you want to give some opening thoughts on the uh, pairing here? So, the, the Rattray uh, has some nice, light, uh, fruity flavors with it. Uh, picking up some wood notes and just a little bit of spice and the retro hail um, on its own very very smooth very very smooth spice um, the uh, with the Cabernet it's bringing a little bit more of those earthy wood tones um, I love the the cherry uh, flavors in the in the wine um, I think it's just enhancing a little bit more of those uh, earth notes as well um, very very good Dave, um, before you tell me what you think of the pairing here, you had started uh, talking about how one of the Padrones had actually blended the uh, Bolivar that we were smoking. Were you able to find uh, more specific information about that for our listeners? <laughs> yeah, it was um, Estelo Padron. Mm. Yeah. And he had worked uh, for Padron until I think the uh, the late 80s and then left to join uh, this company um, and that which later then got bought out by uh, um, General. General and he um, passed away I guess in 2015 mm. but this would had been a long time product of his that he had blended so is he a son a, a cousin it, it, brother. Didn't, it didn't say in the no. article yet. No. Okay. All right. So some somebody uh, from the Padron family um, blended that cigar. They did a pretty sticking good job as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> Dave, what do you think about the uh, pipe tobacco right off and the uh, pairing with the uh, Cabernet? I'm getting a lot of earth, some dried fruit, um, and it's pairing very well with the wine. I feel like they that this is definitely a complimentary pairing. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely bringing out uh, some of the Virginias, definitely some dried wood. I think the uh, the dryness of the wine is is bringing out some of the wood as well. Um, yeah, it's it's. Yep, I'm pretty satisfied so far. Not surprised, Nick. Um, what are you getting there in thirty seconds or less? Thirty seconds. Or less. <laughs> it's good, sweet, little spice. The drink is bringing out a little bit more sweetness in the tobacco. Mm -hmm. Getting the deep fruitiness from the drink. Smooth, light. Got some really nice body there. Um, yeah, that's what I got right now. It's, it's very nice, but come back to me later. Okay, we'll come back nice. to you sometime later tonight. Um, <laughs> Kendra, you're smoking this in your... Beautiful Savinelli honey pot cigar. I mean pipe. Excuse me. Yes. What I do am. you think of your pairing so far? You already asked me. It's Bree's turn. Is, did I already ask yeah. you? Did I ask you what we were recording? What? Yeah. She was the, did. She was the first out of the gate. Man. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Uh, I don't moment. even remember. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, I, I can't I can't leave Lady Celeste. Can't leave you guys. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me back to reality. Bree. This one has um tobacco. A very pleasant yes, yes. <laughs> a little bit of tobacco. Very pleasant aroma. So mm. like I feel like this is one of those pipe tobaccos where like if you don't smoke pipe tobacco, you're sitting in a bar and you smell it. You're gonna be like, hmm, what is that? That smells very like sweet and smoky and like mm. campfire, and it's it's very mm. pleasant. Um, I would call it like a, a cherry wood smoked pairing because Whoa. cherry wood smoked pairing. It's mm. like when you're smoking the tobacco, 
you're getting like you guys were saying mm. like a lot of that earthiness you're getting like a little bit of mesquite and then you sip the wine with it and it completely brings out those like sweet fruit notes but it's yeah. still maintaining its earthiness and its base yeah some good stone fruit kind of notes in this oh, yeah stone fruit it's uh really really i love this tobacco this is so far it is really just fantastic and the the Cabernet is just really picking up on the Virginias and bringing out that fruity sweetness. Um, so far, the, the pairing is just uh, fantastic here. Um, let's see. <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, some more stuff about the anniversary of not just blowing smoke. And one of the things that... Um, you may or may not uh, know is that over this last year we have done very little outside promotion of this podcast um, you know we've put it on our own stuff it's in, in the twins newsletter and um, we're promoting it some on facebook and it's got its ig page and everything like that but we've done very little as far as getting the word out about the podcast. And that, that honestly has been kind of intentional. We have been wanting to really work out a lot of the kinks and kind of find our stride and our unique voice before we really pushed it out there. And, um, we're getting to the point now where we, I think, all feel comfortable about uh, the kind of program we are, the kind of, um, the, the quality of the information we have. We're comfortable with each other. And so, you know, over the next year, you're going to see us really kind of pushing that a little bit more. But in spite of the fact that we have done very little to promote this, um, we have still done very, very well. And I wanted to share some stats with uh, our listeners out there to kind of let you know where we're at. And it is very, very interesting and very satisfying to me that with next to no promotion of this show, we are listened to on a regular basis in 35 states. Nice. Uh, we have gone way beyond our uh, New England uh, states and are heard literally from one end of the country to the other. As a matter of fact, our top five, our top five states, um, number one is New Hampshire, Yay. which is what we want. That's, you know, our primary audience is our uh, family, our customer family at, at Twin Smoke Shop. And so we always want New Hampshire uh, to be number one because that's where we're at. Uh, that's followed by Massachusetts and Rhode Island that um, rounds out the top three. And number four, number four was a big surprise to me. California. No. Delaware. Texas. No. Florida. No. Florida. No. Wait, Canada. No. Delaware. That's a country. <laughs> Sorry, Rod. Right. I was trying to trying to get a shout out to Rod there. We have a lot of listeners in Alabama. In Bama. Alabama. Alabama. Bama country. Alabama. Thank you, Alabama. Got lots of listeners down there in South Alabama. My parents watching? Probably. We got some listeners in Bama. Is that the <laughs> correct accent? Maybe maybe it's all your family. Maybe I'm thinking this is awesome and it's really just it's really just your parents listening to the show. That that's totally possible. And then number 5 Washington state, state. Whoa, Washington state. I thought you were going to say Washington D.C. All the way on the other side of the country, we have lots of people listening. Seattle, or very few people yeah, who are all listening Seattle. all the time. <laughs> Think <laughs> Sasquatch is listening to mm. in the woods it's, somewhere. It's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. I think he could be, or she could be, or it could is be. Sasquatch I don't know. Is she? They. It could be. Well, if there's, they, if, yeah. there's, if there's more than one, then there has to be a female involved and some, you know, 
mixing and matching and okay. back and forth and I'm stuff like that. I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable with where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on. <laughs> move you know, along. And again, move along. you know, this was, you know, really developed for, you know, reaching Twins audience and no real promotion. And yet we are listened to literally around the world in 17 different countries. Thank you. 17 different countries. The first, of course, being the United States. Second. Canada? No. Damn. Damn. Rod, again, I, I'm sorry, man. You would think, with as much as Rod has done for this show, that it would be Canada. Uh, but Canada is number three. Number two is the United Kingdom. Really? Wow. Yes, the UK. Cheers. The UK is our number two country. Three is Canada. You know what number four that is? Be my fault. This really surprised me. Number Africa? four? No, that's a continent. Okay. <laughs> South America. Australia. Uh, also Jesus. a continent. <laughs> Australia. No. Mm. Although Australia is one of the countries. Mm. Japan? The fourth largest country with listenership is India. Wow. wow. Really? Awesome. India. Damn. Thank How you weird is in. that? I never would have expected that. Number five is Germany. Wow. We yeah. have several listeners in Germany. Well, shout out to just really, those really folks good. in Germany. Go figure. Go figure, Fräulein. We have listeners in Germany. I think that's a... They may be offended by that. So. They may very, be offended. very offended. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's a southern accent. But we are knacking, so we just keep going. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> moving on. We love you, Jeremy. Let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, downloads. Okay. Um, this is this is hard for some of us to to for mm. for people to get because we've actually been hosted on two different sites. Really. Anchor. Yeah. Where we started, which is a, a free hosting site. And then in January, we switched to uh, Podbean, and, um, and then we started going on to YouTube as, as we, you know, did our, uh, you know, first started audio and then video-based stuff ended up over there. And when you put those together, those uh, sites, you have um, 4,584 downloads. <coughs> over the last year nice and then when you look at um uh facebook mm -hmm. facebook's a little bit weird because it, you know it doesn't tell you how long everybody watched something mm -hmm. but it does tell you how many people tuned in to watch at least some part of your video mm -hmm. and there were uh over 6600 almost seven almost 6700 views on Facebook in the last year. And that's only been nice. since March when we started that. And if you add all those together, that's um, over 11,200 downloads and Ooh. views that's of our of show when we weren't trying to promote it at all, which is what kind of gets me with that. Those are really good numbers for not really doing anything, which maybe, you know, I hope is a good sign of of our uh, the content that we have or the format that we have, people enjoy listening to it. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was share a little bit about our top five downloaded episodes. Mm. And uh, it's funny, you know, the number one uh, episode that's been downloaded is Aging Tobacco Part Two. Wow. Where we talk about aging pipe tobacco. I miss Steve. And yeah, I miss Steve too. Where is he now? He's is he in I don't know. Rhode Island, New York, somewhere? He's working at a shop somewhere. He's working at a shop there. somewhere and yeah, somewhere down. Steve, there. we miss you if you're watching. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then that's followed by Aging Tobacco Part One, also with Steve. Yeah. Where we talked about aging cigars. Oh, it's a great episode. But it's mm. interesting to me that the number one downloaded show is not cigars; it's pipe tobacco. Kurt, any words? Yeah, where's Kurt? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, number three was episode one. 
Really? Episode one, and don't worry, this episode is, has no Jar Jar Binks. That was the full title of that episode. They just downloaded it episode because of the one, title. Um, then they the tuned number off. number three most episode. Um, and then um, the top five episode where mm-hmm. we shared our top five favorite cigars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, number episode. five was four short cigars and brown number four. Ooh. Where we talked about, our, it was something we did last fall. We talked about, you know, in fall, people tend to start smoking shorter cigars. You know, in the wintertime, people, a lot of people are smoking outside here in New England. They can't be outside unless you're Nick for more than 20 minutes. And so what, what cigar are they going to smoke? And so we <laughs> talked about four short cigars in that episode is one of our most listened to episodes there. And uh, then the last bit of stats I thought I'd share are the five most watched. Since we started Facebook in COVID times, Mm. what have been the most watched shows? Steve Saka. Steve Saka where we had him on as we smoked the Unstolen Valor, that was number four. Wow. He was number four. Do you know what the number one was? Yes. Charlie Moore. No. Wow. Uh, Not even close. Really? Not even close. Not even close. No. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. The number one episode was when we had Lauren Ferraro on, smoking the Ashton Symmetry and then going into the Ashton cabinet number seven. Yeah. For our show. Not a surprise there. That had <laughs> 1,200 plus unique viewers. Wow. Have seen that episode. Now that Lauren is single, I think the next time she's on, we're probably going to crack 2K. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to break the internet. The internet but will be Lauren broken. Lauren is. You know, she is sweet and she's and awesome, man. Wonderful, and she knows her stuff. Yeah, you know, so it's she's great to have on there. She was number one ah. at twelve hundred plus views. Oh yeah. Uh, the number two episode had seven hundred and sixty-one views, and that was any guesses? Correct. Kurt Candle, the first time. Kurt Candle, the first time he was on. <laughs> oh, yeah. With the WK and the 724 Lancero. We for, it was the first episode where we deliberately uh, forewent the pipe because yeah. Kurt wasn't going to go anywhere near that burning <laughs> hair kind of thing. <laughs> you know? And uh, so that was number two. Uh, the first time we had Orlando Cabrera smoking the Camacho 2012 throwback. That was number three. And it's interesting that the three top viewed episodes were all during the COVID shutdown when we were doing this specifically to get in touch with people because they couldn't come into the shop. And their numbers were all really, really huge. And um, that was very interesting. Then you got Steve Saka number four with the unstolen valor and then number five was in my mind it's a tie um but the one that wins out is fireman joe with the southern car we did the uh that was a good show we did the um uh rose of sharon lancero yeah that was a good show 570 view unique viewers and right behind it at 566. So I, I kind of call that like, that's so close. Mm. Yeah, that's a tie. Yeah. Yeah. That was the episode where we had Kendall and Charlie Moore on. Yeah. The, uh, I was a, Factory 57. It wasn't even the Not Just Blowing Smoke show. That was Charlie Moore show, Charlie featuring, Moore show. featuring Not Just Blowing With, Smoke. <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was, that was funny. And uh, so that's kind of a little highlight of, of uh, what's been popular, what's worked, <laughs> and what's not <laughs> on the show. Um, so the, the we got to get more beautiful women on the show, like Bree and Kendra and Lauren. How more beautiful can you get than Bree and Kendra? That's true. Dave so and this, Awake. Dave? 
<laughs> Dave in a wig. <laughs> Dave in a wig. We were talking about that. Oh my gosh. Doing a oh. a ladies episode I'm and gonna need to Dave was going to be in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need more alcohol for that one. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Well, along that line, there has been the suggestion of doing a ladies night episode where it's just uh, women hosting the show. And I'd love to know what people think about that. Kimber won't be happy. Oh, Kurt's clapping. That's just fantastic, Kurt. Thank you for this clapping. <laughs> Dave, can we get some clapping, please? <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, what is next year on the show here? Um, Kendra? Oh, boy. <laughs> Would you rather... Do you have... Any pairings that we've done that really stand out to you that you've done Ooh, on the show? That's and a good you know, Collins, you know, you know, Glenn Fittick, you know, twenty one years. That doesn't count. That's not you didn't do that. He wins by he default. He just showed up and brought a two hundred bottle of scotch, and of course, we're gonna think it's freaking fantastic. Well it but was. Is there anything it was. It was <laughs> it was fantastic. It was. There's no denying. But is there anything that stands out to you as something that you just did that was fan flipping tastic? Well, wouldn't it be the episode when we had the penicillin? I was and just going to say that. Were like yeah. Flipping yeah. out about it. It was amazing. <laughs> I'll have another. <laughs> and, another. Think, and we did. And I we'll go out and was, buy another. That was definitely the favorite with all of you guys because oh, yeah. you got off of the show and came upstairs and ordered more. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. And that was I don't remember what it was paired aging, with. That was the Aging Tobacco Bar 2 episode. Oh, yeah, because yeah, Steve was there. Steve mm -hmm. said that's the best drink he's ever had in his life. Yeah. Or the best pairing, right? The best pairing he'd ever had yeah. with tobacco. Mm -hmm. Whether it was scar or pipe in his life. And yeah. say what you want about little Steve, but he has smoked a lot. Of tobacco. Yeah, he has. The kid got knowledge. Mm -hmm. He is. Uh, he's forgotten more than I know. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. He's got a brain for tobacco. The the extensive knowledge that he's enlightened me on after the show was extensive. Mm. Unbelievable brain on that guy. I miss Steve. Did I say that before? You did. Okay. <laughs> okay. We got to get him back. We text get, him, you know, text him, call him, we'll email get, him. We can get Steve back. If nothing else, we'll we have, can have Paul write a letter. Type it. If nothing else, we can have him Skype in. If you can't get up, <laughs> something like that. I think no. my favorite pairings are the ones where I see the the doubt in all of your eyes. Oh yeah. And then, and then once we we have it, you guys, you it's so you are so right. That's like so Paul good. with yes, the margarita. Yes. Oh, Those are great. my favorite pairings, mm -hmm. and I couldn't say exactly what it was with what, but. You know, it's it's really. She just likes to see the fear in my eyes. Yes. you know, yeah. going I into like it. I like to be right. <laughs> she likes to That's be. That's my kind of pairing. You can't possibly be saying it's tequila. It look at oh me. Oh my gosh, there's... this is the best freaking yeah. tequila I've ever had in my life. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I totally get That's that. That's my kind of pairing right there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're drinking no. what? My favorite painting was the penicillin. <laughs> I think we were all <laughs> already Dave. waking up. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dave. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Nobody asked, so I just thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> but we went over this there already that everybody ordered like thirds. Ask, <laughs> okay. God bless you, Dave. <laughs> We love Paul, you, Dave. We love you, buddy. Paul, yes. it is time for the news. It is time right. for news with Paul. Okay. News with Paul. So this actually came out earlier this month, but we never touched on it. So I felt... <laughs> but Paul was on vacation. Yes, I was on vacation, vacation and we had you know, no everything, everything fell. So We had no news. Nat Sherman. <laughs> 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 One of the oldest names in the American cigar business will shut down its premium cigar businesses next month. Oh. The 90-year-old company will close both its wholesale cigar business and the company's iconic New York City retail location known as the Nat Sherman Townhouse. The move comes almost a year after Altria, Nat Sherman's parent company, 
announced it was hoping to sell the premium cigar business. It said there was interest from a variety of buyers, but ultimately no deal was able to be reached, particularly after the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic began. Yeah. Altria purchased Nat Sherman in January 2017. The purchase was widely seen as a move to try to acquire the Nats brand to compete against American Spirits, the leader of natural leaf wrapped cigarettes, which is owned by Altria's competitor, British American Tobacco. Nat Sherman International includes the retail store as well as the wholesale premium cigar and pipe company. The cigarette portfolio is handled by a different Altria division and is not affected by the announcement. No final date of operation has been given, but the businesses are expected to be closed by the end of September. Wow. So sad. So no more Nat Sherman. So sad. I can't believe that. That has been around there go for my hints. so many yep. years. There go my hints. Well, it's funny because the hints are part of the cigarette part, mm -hmm. but they've delisted a lot of those brands, the Black and Gold and the Hinta Mint and the uh, Habana Ovals. I mean, oh, as yeah. far as we know, we're not going to get them anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I find that funny that they make the point of saying that the cigarettes weren't affected and we're no longer able to get them. Mm -hmm. Right. So obviously they were affected. Um, that's really strange. Yeah. That's that really strange to me. Yeah, it is. There are so, I, you know, Nat Sherman cigarettes are s such a big thing. I mean, for years and years and years. And all of a sudden, everything's just gone. And people are, people are really flabbergasted. And it, you know, while it, that's obviously going around the cigar world, I don't know that it's so much public knowledge, even among regular, you know, cigarette smokers that, um, you know, maybe they're going to bring those back in some other iteration, you know, later Rename on. Them. But as, right now, we're not able to get them. Nope. So, so sad. it is just a real, it's an end of an age as far as that goes. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. And I've, I've never been, that was one of the places if I would, the next time I was in New York City, going to the Nat Sherman building right. um, was one of the places I really wanted to go. And, you know, it's just, it, this is just another aspect of how COVID has really, you know, been not a small impact on the business. Mm. Not only has it been affecting production in other different, you know, in other countries, distribution, you know, getting the cigars here, but to have, you know, I mean, in New York, you've got all the tax on cigars and cigarettes anyway. New York City adds stuff on top of the state's taxes. And then I'm sure, you know, having a building in downtown New York you know, it's like a small fortune in and of itself. Yeah. And so for COVID to basically shut down an iconic place that has, you know, been around for almost 100 years, that is just crazy. Yeah. So thanks for bringing this all down, Paul. You're welcome. On our anniversary <laughs> episode. And I think I have just a way to bring us back up again. Oh, yeah. Bring. Do it. Would you be willing to sing happy anniversary to not just blowing smoke? Oh, okay. okay. So nice. We need, we need, Only if Kendra happy dance is not okay. Let us see it. Let us see it. Rod wants to see it. Those beautiful tattoos. Bree, we probably we know you probably haven't had a gig in a while, so Okay. Here you go. Fallon. Branch and Tongue style. I know. <laughs> Just like happy anniversary to you. Easy, Danny. I don't know, Dan. <laughs> Danny sounded like he was having a stroke right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have to hold up the baton okay, for this one. Okay. Right, okay. Right. Straight face. Here we go. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to not just blowing smoke. 
happy anniversary to you and many more. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Voice of an angel. Wow. <laughs> Voice of an angel. I feel much more lifted up. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, you're actually part of a band. Yeah, right? yeah. What you want to talk a little bit about that? What yeah, do you so do in I, your secret life? I always preface with it's not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> but um yes, I I play bass in a death metal band and we're death called metal. Wretched Tongues. Wretched we tongues. are on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, the like. We are releasing our music video in early September. Nice. So Yay. look out for that. <laughs> That's going to be our new right. intro music. It should oh, be. Sean's always like, I want wretch tongues at the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, yeah. is, what does wretch tongues sound like? Uh, I mean, I could show you on Spotify, but I don't think I want to subject everybody to that right now. No. It's a little late it's in the little, evening for evening. that kind of wake up. A little too much wine. You know, but that kind of wake up. Wretch tongues on Spotify. Hmm. <laughs> Do we have a would you rather question? We do. Yes. We do have a would you rather question. Nice. Let's see. Paul, who do you think I should ask first? Dave. Dave. Mm. Would you rather go deep sea diving or bungee jumping? Hmm. That's a good question, man. Deep sea diving or bungee dumping? That is what I said. Mm. Which would you rather do? <laughs> Deep sea diving. Why? Because uh, I've already done my own bungee jumping without the bungee. So uh -oh. I'll just, so... Uh, I'd rather do the deep sea diving. Yeah, that well, wasn't bungee Dave, jumping, now, that was just jumping. Now you have to, now you have Why to would I want to go yourself. back up? You have to explain yourself now, Dave. What do, what do you mean? Well, you've I mean, gone bungee jumping without the bungee. A, a very long time ago, I. Uh, In a galaxy far, far away. I jumped <laughs> off the Quincy Quarries, which are now filled, and it was a 90 foot drop. Oh, God. So, yes. Without a rope. No. I burst it in the eardrum. Because I went too under too fast, too far. So no. bursted. Yep. But I would I would love to go deep sea diving. You can bust Absolutely. an eardrum that way too though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can if you don't equalize. And wreck wreck your elbows too. I mm. I don't know how the elbows are involved, but all right. <laughs> Oh, where he doesn't know more about it. Uh, Nick. Yes. Bungee jumping or deep sea diving? Which would you rather do? Well, I've done deep sea diving already. Um, I think I have about fourteen dives under my belt. Um, so it'd probably be bungee jumping, even though I am deathly, deathly scared of heights. And it would, oh man, it would be. You would probably have to push me off to get me. To go off, but uh, I would probably push you off. I would, I would want you guys to push me off, uh, because I chickened out on a in Puerto Rico with my wife in uh, zip lining, which Puerto Rico has the highest zip line in the world. Really, I didn't know that. They do, um, and I chickened out. I thought drinking a whole lot would help me with my <laughs> courage, and it did not. And it was my wife and three of our friends that went on the zip line and I stayed at the bar drinking and I chickened out at the last second. If the choice is a bar or a zip lining, you're going to pick the bar. Well, I, I went up there. My full intention was to do the zip lining. And then I got there and I saw the tower, which was like eight stories high. And I said, yeah, I'm going to pass. And they had me all the way to putting the harness on and everything, and we were going to get hooked up. The guy was going to bring us up to the, the tower, and I said, yeah, I'm all set. I, I was like, I'll, I'll meet you guys at the bar. But I'd like to do the bungee jumping just to kind of get over the fear of heights, but somebody would definitely have to push me. For sure. For sure. 
like trick me and be like, hey, we're not going to push you and push me. For real. Paul, what do you think? Deep sea diving or bungee jumping? Besides the idea of that bungee snapping and me pulling down to the ground. <laughs> that uh, would suck. It, I, I'm, I would literally think that the bungee jumping would, <clears throat> the, the thrill of that would only last maybe 30 seconds. I would absolutely, yeah. I've never, I've never scuba dived. I've always wanted to. And I think the ocean has so much, you know, so many things to see that I would, I would absolutely pick the deep sea diving. I can bring you if you'd like. Me and you can hold hands. Can we? Can we? Okay, I'll pass. <laughs> okay. Three. Would you rather go bungee jumping or deep sea diving? So ever since I was like 10, I've wanted to go skydiving, bungee jumping, base jumping. I just like, I just, I want to jump off of things. It sounds fun. I think base jumping is illegal in a lot of states, but yeah. I'm going to break the law, but. Cool. (laughs) um, On this, as interesting as deep sea diving would be, um, I would also like to do that, but it's definitely more anxiety producing for me, the Mm. idea of deep sea diving. Um, so I think first I would have to say I would go base jumping and then base maybe a few years after that, deep sea diving. But base jumping wasn't a choice. Okay. No, okay <laughs> She's like, I don't even want the, bungee bungee she's jumping. like, I don't want the cord. Skydiving's number one, then bungee jumping. So and then again, deep sea diving. So are you picking bungee jumping? I'm picking bungee jumping. Okay. Yes. I just want to be clear. <laughs> Both is really both. my answer. But both. Bungee You'll jumping do both. first. You bungee jump into the ocean. Yes. And then die. And then yeah. skydive. And then and I then, die. And then, okay. and, then yep. and then she dies. Yes. She, yeah. <laughs> okay. Too fast. <laughs> so metal. Kendra. Damn. Would you rather <laughs> go bungee jumping or deep sea diving? Deep sea diving. Ooh. Amen. And the reason why is because I've been obsessed with sharks ever since I was a little kid. And as an adult, I've been I've researched some trips to do cage diving with great whites. Mm. That is definitely on my bucket list. I wanna do it, need to do it. I def- definitely will. So I have no interest in, in bungee jumping, skydiving, anything like that. No, no, no. <laughs> why why jump out of a perfectly good plane that's that's what that's all i ask yeah i'm all set with jumping off of anything really if the plane is going down then i might go down with the plane but yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm not jumping on anything no nope. and bungee sharks. jumping don't you like get whiplash i mean that's just you can it looks yeah. terrible it looks terrible. <laughs> it looks it looks very hurtful on the it, back. It really does. <laughs> That's a valid point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come out of there and you have to see a chiropractor right, right yeah. after. Mm-hmm. I won't work for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to start a, another GoFundMe page. Yeah. <laughs> Kendra's hurt again. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so Danny. For me, it would be deep sea diving. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It would be deep sea diving. We can all go I together. Have, I have no desire to bungee jump. Um, um, I, I, I kind of have Kendra's feeling about that. Um, having my back kind of stretched <laughs> as, you know, and then sprung backwards. You know, that's, this body is not designed for that kind of uh, <laughs> elastic activity, you know. Uh, sinking, however, that <laughs> he doesn't even need weights. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, doesn't and, even need weights. But I, you know, I've been diving before myself. Haven't been in a long, long time. But but I would love to do that. I've always uh, loved the ocean, and and um, uh, that would be a big thing for me. Um, you know, cage. Diving into a into a, a shark infested waters, um, that's a little that's a little uh, awesome. You know, um, you know, Princess Brideish, you know, thing. You know, 
Um, no, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know that reference either. Yeah. Well, wow. in, in Princess Bride, it was eel infested. Oh, yeah. Oh. You, know, um, you know, out for a pleasure cruise in eel infested waters. Um, I maybe could see myself doing that, but the. You're protected. Yeah. You're protected in that, well, you think so. They're great whites. However, did you know oh. that sharks actually don't like the taste of human meat? They actually only attack humans because they mistake them as seals and other sea creatures. That is correct. Uh -huh. Well, my body type is very seal-like. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the seal. Espe me. A lion seal. The lion seal here would just, uh, you know, great whites would be like, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> To lunch, boys. <laughs> and dinner. <laughs> and supper. <laughs> and brunch the next day. And a midnight Second, snack. A midnight snack. Second breakfast. Second breakfast. <laughs> yes. Yes. A shark's delight. Um, oh, so, but still, deep sea duck. What, what's that look for? Why are you looking at me like that? I mean, it's. It, it you're thinking, be yeah, you're right, Dan. That's right. You'd so, be a good meal for a shark. <laughs> <laughs> so Kurt knows our next employee field trip. Yeah. <laughs> no, because the great whites are all around New England now. So they they are. might not need to go to San Diego. We can just go right South out to Africa. Hampton. Yeah. Just yeah. go right out to Hampton. We'll the do cave. some shore diving. Yeah. I'll lead you guys out there and then I'll stay on the shore. Because I'm all set with great whites, man. I'm a good. woman just died in Maine. I know. Yeah. That's yeah. unfortunate. Her stomach got eaten. Yeah. Her stomach got eaten. Not her legs, not her Entire arms. Abdomen. Oh. Well, she that's was the good swimming stuff by the seals yeah. in yeah. a wetsuit. Oh, yeah. Suit, so well, that's, that's... She asked that's, for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. You heard it here, folks. No sympathy <laughs> no from sympathy. the potion master here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She asked for you it. You go swimming in a wet suit by the seals. It's your own freaking fault if you get eaten by the sharks. <laughs> oh, it is true. It is true. You swim with the food, you become the food. Yeah. No, Pretty much. That's true. All right, folks. That's probably enough for everybody tonight. Um, is it? It could be. Um, next week, go figure. We're going to have a little bit more of Lauren Ferraro. Oh, yeah. Woohoo. And we're going to be lighting up the uh, San Cristobal legend. Legend. The legend. The legend. And uh, for the second half of the show, we're going to be opening a tin of Savinelli Jupiter. And uh, that's going to be a really, really good show. So make sure that you tune in for that. Follow us to get notified on facebook.com forward slash NJBS podcast. And of course, you can follow us at Not Just Blowing Smoke on Instagram. And that way you can be sure not to miss a thing. This is Pastor Padrone saying thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us through our first year. And we are, as Bree sang, looking forward to many more. Be safe and stay smoky, my friends. And for everyone who wanted to know what Wretched Ton sounds like. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here we go. I don't hear anything that I hear some doesn't static. sound. What's that? Oh, that's, is that, that's oh, nice. That's it's so subtle. Pick it up, Richard! <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to listen to this while I sleep tonight. Oh, my God. Put me right to bed. So soothing. Put me right to bed. I think I want to dance. <laughs> Is it happy dance time? Come on, Kendra. Come on, happy dance. Happy dance. Happy dance. That's what I'm talking about. Happy dance. Yes. Yes. Bang that head back and forth. Yes. Bounce that brain back and forth in your skull. Come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. And that's not just blowing smoke. Thanks, everyone. And another day, something. another smoke. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody, and that 
is not just blowing smoke. Rolling with the top down.